Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. Today we're going to take a look at European Space Agency. So let's dive right into it. One thing you have to understand, this whole space race began after World War II. So in after World War II, a Cold War began. Basically, Soviet Union and America went head to head in the race of space. So Eastern European scientists realized any nation that is in, exists in entirety of European Union can single-handedly cannot able to compete with America or Soviet Union. So they had it to come together. And European Space Agency, as we know it today, was established in 30 May 1975. And you have to understand, it, they are not a military organization. They want to compete in space. They want to compete for uh, powerful reasons, but they are not a military organization. This many Thing, blue things you are seeing, they are countries that take particular in European Space Agency. However, not every country that is in European Space Agency pays the same amount of money. Here's a small graph. As you can see, Germany pays roughly 23% of the entirety of the budget. France pays 22.6%. Italy pays 13.7%. United Kingdom, 8.7%. However, you have to be mindful, each of these country itself has a space agency in, in them. However, they are not uh, a completely independent organized. They are like subsidiary, like they uh, do their thing in their country and then things are exported or like, you know, scientist data, knowledge, whatever exported to European Space Agency. So if you look into these countries, their own space agency, it might not be that good or may, they may not even have launch vehicle capabilities. So this is why it was created. So what do they do? They have human space flight program. Basically, they are successfully capable of sending humans uh, to space. They have a large astronaut program, which the, which have a lot of astronauts coming from entirety of Europe. Uh, but suffice to say, they do not have any manned uh, vehicle. Basically, they cannot send their astronaut. Like Russia can send their own astronauts using their own spacecraft. America can do that using their own spacecraft. Used to able to, since shuttle is retired now and SLS is not ready and uh, China can do that. However, they are not part of the International Space Treaty, so they are not allowed to go into ISS. And they have uh, played a very, very crucial role in International Space Agency, not only with funding, also to you know calm down the situation and don't start another Second World War or Cold War. So as you can see, ESA supported the very big module known as Columbus. And uh, suffice to say, uh, ESA not only just pay for uh, NASA's projects, they also contribute in terms of research, development and uh, manufacturing. So they are not just like, you know, okay, they are paying the money. They are also paying the resources and technical expertise. So suffice to say, they are quite crucial for International Space Agency. And not to mention, they also send astronauts. So they get like in space shuttle days, they used to get four seats reserved for uh, ESA to decide whoever goes on that. So. ESA and NASA, they almost sound the same and they are both uh, Western. So suffice to say, you might want to compare it to NASA. So let's look into it. It's half the budget. So even though that many countries are pouring their money into it, they are not very financially strong because in this year, NASA's budget is around $20 billion. And ESA, ESA, although they sub, uh, provide their information in euros, it's roughly eight uh, to seven uh, billion euros. So suffice to say, you can easily assume it's ten billion dollars. So it's half of the NASA's budget. Now the biggest problem right now is that they do not have any manned craft. Now this is very cr crucial, and their staff capability. Like if you go to ESA, ESA's website and how many people work in it, you will only find two thousand people. You go to NASA's and they have employed roughly seventeen thousand people. So suffice to say, NASA is much bigger organization, and uh, ESA's biggest prime you know workhorse is Ariane five. This rocket. This is a heavy lift rocket. Uh, it has almost the same capability of Falcon 9. Only difference is uh, it's four times more expensive. And ESA works very uh, closely with NASA and uh, because ESA does not have any there of manned program, they are working with NASA to develop the Orion project. So they are here this, again, they are same uh, doing the same thing. They are developing uh, R&D, the processes, and basically they're not building their own thing. They're just helping NASA to build it faster. 
So suffice to say, uh, the deeper I dug into ESA, I was not that happy given the fact that they are space organization, they are funded by that many countries. They are not doing something that I, w I could consider like, holy crap, this is awesome. Like, you know, even Japanese space agency has a like, suffice a more better price to performance ratio and ISRO is miles ahead of this and uh, on a one tenth of the budget. So suffice to say, that's why this presentation is very small. Like I couldn't find anything that was like, amazing about them they are a good space organization but they are not very forefronting given the fact that they have 10 billion dollar budget so this was my presentation of isa i hope you guys liked it or learned from it in that case please like subscribe i make video every day and leave a comment press the bell icon to be notified of my progress and as always thanks for watching